Hey everybody, this is Jason Cronin here, and I have a 2010 Coachman Freelander RV. And the reason why I'm so close up is right now we're working on the valves. We actually replaced the valves in the water intake on the outside because the one valve wasn't working properly. And I want to show you what happened. Right here, this is the good valve that we replaced. Right here, this is actually the good valve. And we still replaced it because we were doing the whole project and we wanted to replace both valves. And then also, this is the bad valve right here. And this valve right there, you see the hell actual inside the ball valve part has broke out so it wasn't working. And the water going in here literally was only going in to fill the house, meaning go into the sink and all the other plumbing but not into the tank. It was going into the house but it wasn't going into the tank. And down here is the tank and back here is the house uh, brass attachment that goes into the house. Down here is the tank. This is actually one of the valves right here that we replaced. Another valve right here that we replaced. And this is the cable that goes into the box. But what happened was I put a brand new uh, valve in, but they're different. These are actually valves that you could use in your house that are really heavy duty. I did buy the other valves that for aftermarket, but they weren't really good quality. These ones are actually way better quality, and they actually have butterfly butterfly handles on them, and they're much nicer to use. So right here has a butterfly valve, and just got to turn it up for off and in line for straight. But what I had to do because we put the other valves in is because, and my neighbor rebuilt this whole thing. Yeah, we took it out, we cut it back here, took it all out, disconnected it from the pump because my water pump is actually back here right where my storage unit is. And it's a little bit of a challenge actually. Most times water pumps are underneath the sink. But I had to actually grind out the cover. If you can see this cover right here, I had to grind these bottom areas out in order to physically make it work. This one had to grind out, and this one I had to grind out right here with a Dremel and a grinding stone on the Dremel. And what it looks like, when you put it back together, this is the cover, it goes inside here. This cover goes inside, and then the handles go on. But today I'm putting it back together. And the trick of putting it back together as well, I actually bought some new water flanges as well, intake flanges. And these are awesome, because what these do, I'm zoomed in a lot here, I know it's probably harder to see, but it's a brand new water flange, and I have plumber's tape already on it. Right here, I have plumber's tape on the flange. And these are actually really good quality ones, and I'll put a link to them in this video. And right here, it has a cap on it. And you can see how the water goes in. And I'll cap it back up. And those go in here when the cover is on. Right there, and you have another one for over here. And make sure you put plumber's tape on them because it's really important to do that because it keeps the threads uh, watertight when you put it back onto old valves. And these are actually all PEX piping we're using. First thing I'm going to do is put the cover back on. And it's really zoomed in so you can see what I'm doing. You may not be able to see everything, but I'll explain it to you. And I actually spray painted this cover. I spray painted it right now. I cover this up with tape. This is a kind of complex one. Uh, some of the RVs actually only have one knob. This has two. And as you can see, it doesn't look pretty in here. But I'm gonna try to put this back together as best I possibly can. And I painted it as well so that it has a nice coating on it. I just took off the tape. Is this tank fill, system use, city water hookup, and winterize right here. First thing I have to do is hook the cable back up on here for you put in a campground and you have cable hookup. You could have cable when you're boondocking off your phone actually. That's what I do. I use my Wi-Fi tether and you can find stations on your computer actually. First thing is I need to put this adapter, this little cable adapter, and you put that back into the box. That's the first. There's two sides to it. You actually put in the side, I know how, how it worked, is the side that had the rusted side went straight into the box. A little washer as well goes on there. And that goes into the box. 
this way. And what I'm doing is you can see right there, the cable goes back into it. A little finicky. I'm gonna fast forward everything, speed it up for you so you can see what I'm doing. Now slide this in, it's really kind of tricky because sliding this in is actually going to be a little bit harder because getting it back on, what I have to do is slide in the flanges in here and then put the box back on. Just want to make sure it fits in there. First thing is, have to get this flange, has to screw into the fresh water intake. Slide this box, I'm going to stand over here and do this. So the first thing that I have to put in this flange. And what I'm doing is I'm going back here and I have to tighten it up, which is not too fun to be honest with you. Trying to tighten this up is really a challenge. We actually try to extend it, but it is not the easiest thing to do. And by yourself, it's really, really hard actually. It needs to be lined up perfectly. That is actually the intake. That's the intake for the sewer uh, black water tank for a flush. That one right over here on this side. And I'm just twisting it. Instead of actually twisting the back, I'm actually turning it in to it. Now the next flange is a little bit harder because it's on the other side. And this is the fresh water intake flange. And that's going to be a little bit more of a trick to get to. Whew. That is the first part, is getting those flanges on, which is very, very difficult, as you see. Now I need to seal behind here with butyl tape and screw those back in. And I need to screw that onto the wood, actually, as well, which is even more of a challenge. And I actually bought all new screws. This is actually an inch screw. I bought inch and a half screws, and I'm using the half inch screws that were there from before. First thing to do is to find where this screw went originally. And that was like right about there. And that's a challenge. Getting that screw back in to where it was before. I just got the butyl tape and I'll show you what butyl tape is. Actually this butyl tape right here, it's a big roll I got. I ordered this on Amazon. And this actually helps seal. What it is, is like almost like that stuff you put on a poster, the stick on a wall, that blue tacky stuff. But this actually will seal behind there. Instead of using caulking, you can use butyl tape, which is really nice. It comes in a big roll. It's easy to cut. I'm just going to put three strips between each screw hole. One here, one here, and then one here. And then that will seal behind there, and then the screws will press right in. and have no problem sealing up, which will be really nice. And I'm going to do that. Sorry if you don't see, but I'm putting this little piece of butyl tape in between screws on here. As you see now, I finished the project. I actually turned the camera off for a while because it took a very difficult time to get the flanges screwed in the back into the swivel adapters and also to center this so the valves would line up. I, what, what I did here is you, I'll point to them with the scissors right here. These are two different valves. As you see, they're indoor valves but they work really well. The, the only downfall was that there was barely zero clearance, I would say almost no clearance whatsoever for these valves to actually turn. It's actually touching. If I need to take this handle off, I can and scrape it down with a Dremel and repaint it, uh, maybe in the future, but now they do clear. And the way I was able to line this up, the screw into the wood behind here, is to put on the handles and put them at the closed position, which is holding them straight up. So I could put that screw in, that screw in, and that screw in because that's where the wood is, where it holds the actual unit to the casing in the back. But I did have to put in one of the old screws over here, flathead, so this handle could actually turn and down just clear enough. Um, the screws I bought were square head, but they had a pan head style, wasn't a flat head style, which is very hard to find. If you could find them, please let me know where they're at, because I can't find them. I went to Lowe's, I went to an RV store, and they're all round pan head. And I used the old round pan head screws, half inch, which I couldn't find either. I got 
inch and inch and a half for the sides put back in and it's very interesting with my unit here because it's filled the tank you turn this one up and then you turn this one down to fill the tank some units only have one hand like I mentioned before but then if you want system use when you're using your pump on the inside you turn this one up and then you turn this one down the opposite way which is system use if you're winterizing or you're doing city hookup you turn both of them up and I did paint the case and I also put back in the adapter for the cable if you ever use cable and I put in some new flanges and these flanges are actually made by JR Products JR Products makes these flanges and I have a link to them that I got on Amazon and they're great flanges they had really good reviews on Amazon you just open them up and you basically put your hose in here for sewer and then also this one for fresh water and the one thing great about it is you don't have to spin it like the old ones where you have to keep spinning it with the hose this one you just turn you just turn this and it allows it to spin which is really nice instead of doing the old version old version was not fun with the brass outside the only downfall about these these came a little bit dirty on the outside I don't know why but in the box the brass made this part a little dirty and it's supposed to be lead free and it had really good reviews the water flanges some water flanges are must e much easier to change because it's just one unit like if you have a trailer here you have two for sewer and fresh water but I'm Jason Cronin here and I hope you really enjoyed that video sorry about the noises in the background because we're outside and it's just a modified version of what I actually did this took me literally probably 12 hours to do from start to finish have my neighbor rebuild the inside with the PEX piping and extend it and also put in new, va new valves right here Put in new flanges right here, paint the box, and put it all back together. But I'll see you next time. Have a great fit day. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any comments, suggestions, or ideas to make this easier, please tell me, and I look forward to hearing them. Have a great day.